So the deal is that I, I uh, that I got my dad's saddle back. And he, and he, he tooled it in uh, 72 and uh, it got raffled off. And 20 years later, <laughs> I was uh, on the Charlie Russell trail ride and we're riding up this thing called Indian's Hill, Indian Hill. We were going up there it's the same hill that where Charlie Russell painted himself coming down, it said, when I was a kid. And uh, we got up the top of Indian Hill, and, and the guy named Sonny Trask has a ranch at the bottom of, of Indian Hill, and he has the, the cabin, the original cabin that uh, Jake Hoover had. Sonny's grandfather bought it from Jake Hoover, and Jake Hoover was the guy that saved Charlie Russell's life when he first came to Montana. He got out here and was going to work for a friend of the family up in uh, Utica there, a guy named Pike Miller, and a friend of the family's, and Charlie got out there and lasted about a week. This is 1880, lasted a week, and uh, he came out, he wanted to go be a cowboy, and all, all Pike had was sheep, so nothing doing, nothing doing, you know. And he took off, and he was gonna walk all the way back to Great Falls. 100 miles and he didn't have a bedroll or a gun or food or anything. And this guy, Jim Cooper, happened on to him. And he said, kid, you better come with me. So Charlie spent the first couple of years in Montana and learned to survive out here at, with Jay Cooper. And uh, Jake, I'm Sonny, Sonny has kept that cabin up all these years. Uh, I have to tell you about Jay Cooper's pig. Jake, Jake hunted meat for the trade and he trade off elk and deer meat all the time for, for different things and, and, and Charlie was out there with him and he traded off a, 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 some elk meat for, for a pig and he traded off for some grain and he kept his pig out there and he's feeding his pig and, and Jake tells uh, Charlie, he says, geez, kid, a guy'd be a damn fool to be out here without a pig, you know, this is, this is great, you know, this is, we're going to have some good bacon come spring. <laughs> He's got this pig going, and, and, and sometimes they take off on these three-day hunts or whatever, and they give the pig extra rations, you know, and put it out there and leave the pig on his own. And they were coming back one time, and, and uh, there was a ruckus going on inside the cabin. And Jake says, stand back, kid, it might be a bear. So he comes down there, and he kicks the door open, and here's this pig, and the pig got into the cabin and got into the molasses and the, the, the flour and the apple rings, and he had uh, molasses and flour all over the Hudson Bay blankets and stuff, and Jake was mad, and he gave him a big swift kick, and he said, get out of here, you little brooder, tomorrow you're bacon, you know, and he's like sharpening knives, and he's just steam, you know, and the, the next day they get up and they go out to, uh, they go out to the pig, and, they, and uh, Jake says to Charlie, he says, well, geez, kid, we can't kill him now. We still got half a bag of grain. We got to feed that out. And then he gets another bag. <laughs> Pretty soon it's getting to be close to winter and the snow's getting ready to start falling. And so he says to Charlie, he says, tomorrow's the day, kid. We're going to do that, do that thing in, you know. So he gets uh, sharpened knives all night there. And then the next morning they get up and they go down to the pig pen and they're both standing right there by that pig. And Jake hands Charlie this axe and says, here, kid, whack him upside the head. I'll go get the knives. Charlie goes, I'm not whacking that pig. That's your pig, Jake. I'm not whacking that pig. He goes, well, you're going to eat the bacon, ain't you? And he says, no, no, Jake, that's your pig. I'm not. So Jake got mad. And he took off and he walked all the way up the mountain. Charlie's leaning over that pig pen, looking at that pig, and all of a sudden, bam, and that pig flips over on its back. Charlie turns around, here comes Jake walking off the mountain. And he walks up to the pig pen there, and he goes, you don't suppose he knows who done it, do you, kid? <laughs> so anyway, Sonny, uh, I got up the top of the mountain there, Sonny, he told me where my dad's saddle was. So. He was 88, he just passed away last week. And uh, this, uh, I, last year at the Charlie Russell auction, they gave him a big heritage award for keeping Jake Hoover's cabin up there. And he's got a sign up there on the road that says, Trash Ranch, Strangers Welcome. <laughs>
You don't see that sign in New York, do you? <laughs> Well, as a young boy, I remember I'd sit up on the stairs Watching over his shoulder As he worked below me there He told that cool damn man In the trade of mold Held in a handmade saddle So many years ago I remember that land he settled My father built by hand Dripping throat it on my pony Rode as fast as the wind, Roy Rogers and Gene Autry. Hop along Cassidy too, must have had handmade sounds, and only the best would do. Great Falls, Montana, 1972. It was a field days convention, they had cowboy polo too. And there was horses and their cowboys, they came from near and far. And they had the banquet dinner at the VFW bar. And when the trophies were all given out to all the winning folks, then the MC took the microphone. He told a couple of jokes. He announced the winning number for the prize up by the band. It was a brand new handmade saddle that was built by my old man. And I remember that leather saddle my father built by him. If I could throw it on my pony, I'd ride across this lane. If I could find that handmade set from so many years ago, I have a history to show my family I treasure forever and more. Now, so many years have come and gone. I've got children of my own. Dad passed on in 83, before my kids were born. They never knew their grandpa, but they got the family brand. And I told them about that saddle that the grandpa made by him. Well, I've asked around the country, old friends my dad did know. But the years have passed, they left me answer this, where does handmade saddle go? It was a Charlie Russell trail ride coming up over the pass. I rode up to old Sonny, and this question I did ask. Do you remember that leather saddle my father built by hand? With the inscription on the fenders, have you seen it around this land? If I could find that handmade saddle from so many years ago. I have a history to show my family I have treasure for river and more. He said there's this fella named Donald Jensen over in Lewistown. He had the winning number, so you should go and hunt him down. So next year before the Russell ride, I drove by Otto's place. Well, we talked a spell, he said it's yours now. Hey, there's a smile upon my face. I'm a-riding that leather saddle My father built by hand I'm a-riding tall and I'm a-riding proud I'm a-doing the best I can He stamped his name right on it It's the mark of a mighty fine man Riding that handmade saddle That my father built by hand Riding that handmade saddle That was built by my old man Sunny Trask, stranger.